Are you running out of space in your backyard orchard and you want to squeeze in a few more delicious fruit trees? Well, one of the easiest ways to do that is through a process of training your trees to grow in the espalier method. Behind me here is a row of three fruit trees that I've stretched along about an 18 to 20 foot length that are no wider than about 18 inches and no more than two feet wide. So in this very narrow space, I'm able to still enjoy three more delicious fruit trees that I've trained using the espalier method. Behind me, I've got three delicious varieties of pomegranates and I just wanna share with you very quickly that Ivory Organics has a November pomegranate sale selling three of the most delicious Dave Wilson Nursery varieties that we picked out together with Tom Spellman of Dave Wilson Nursery. And he's the leading educator on the Dave Wilson Nursery YouTube channel. And the three varieties we came up with is the world famous, wonderful, delicious variety of pomegranate, which is the familiar pomegranate taste that we're all accustomed to as over 90% of the pomegranates sold in stores and nursery worldwide is the wonderful variety. But Unlike the other two varieties, the wonderful variety has a medium sized seed compared to the Parfionca and the Eversweet, which are two additional amazing varieties of pomegranates that we've selected due to the fact that these varieties have very small and soft edible seeds compared to the wonderful medium sized seeds. So it's just gonna be a much more enjoyable experience eating these almost virtually seedless variety pomegranates and also the um, differences between the Eversweet and Parfionca is that the Parfionca has more of that traditional, um, you know, red looking pomegranate color and those high antioxidants that come with the color in addition to is rated as one of the world's best tasting. Um, the inventor of the Parfionca grew close to a thousand different varieties, Dr. Levin, and he selected the Parfionca as being his number one best tasting pomegranate variety out of a thousand varieties and has rated uh, in many taste tests as one of the best tasting pomegranate varieties. So the Parfionca. And then the second one we selected is the Eversweet. And the Eversweet is a clear juice variety and hence is non-staining as well. So still a delicious tasting pomegranate without the color and without the um, staining that would be associated with most pomegranate varieties, but still a very highly rated delicious variety pomegranate. So be sure to check those out at ivyorganics.com. Hi, my name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivy Organics, where we grow cool plants and author, saving the world with the home garden. And today I'm sharing with you three varieties of pomegranates that we've trained using the espalier method, which most of us are accustomed to seeing when growing grapes in a vineyard, where you might have a post with, you know, two to three um, height leveled um, cables that would be used to train the vine against. But you can do the same application with virtually any type of fruit tree or vine you've got on your property. And so behind me, we've used that same espalier training method to basically train a pomegranate. So you can find the same application with apples. You can see it on citrus. You can see it again, virtually with any other fruiting tree. Um, again, it's just a little bit more maintenance in regards to the training involved. And again, for those of you that spend, you know, uh, once or twice a month and hopefully more frequently than that in your backyard orchard, you're going to be able to invest the, the limited time it's going to take to accomplish that goal. I'm actually, here we are towards the end of November and I haven't worked on any training for about the last three to four months on my backyard orchard. So you're gonna see about how messy it is. The pomegranate behind me, I worked on about a month ago, but there's two more alongside of it that I've got to clean up and we're gonna do it together. In the meantime, I mentioned that Ivy Organic has a pomegranate um, sale that's going on right now in the month of November. And I just wanna share with you um, what your pomegranates are gonna look like. And so the containers basically come in a, it's basically a four by four square, 12 inches deep. And then the plant is about 18 inches tall. This one still has some green, but you'll notice another one. And some of you are, you know, questioning the fact that why are some of these coming with yellow leaves or maybe no leaves as it again, pomegranates are a deciduous fruit tree as are apples and figs and so many other fruits, peaches and so forth. And so in the winter months, as we're here now entering um, December, 
you can expect the leaves to fall off. And as soon as the weather begins to warm for us towards the end of January, first weeks of February, the pomegranates will begin to push out new growth. And then another month or two thereafter is when it will begin blooming and fruiting. I would not expect fruit in the first year, but by the second or third year, you can definitely count on some delicious tasting pomegranate varieties from Ivory Organics, also provided to us in partnership with Dave Wilson Nursery. And we are excited to be bringing these delicious flavors into your backyard orchard. So let me share with you some helpful tips on espalier training your pomegranate or any of the fruit tree you may have in your backyard orchard. So here I am alongside my Parfionca pomegranate. I put this one in the first position in the first place closest to the entrance of our garden. As again, this is the world's best tasting pomegranate variety with again, one of the smallest and softest seeds. Many describe it as being a seedless pomegranate variety with the best taste. So um, we're excited to have and share with you the pomegranates that should be fruiting here as we're now entering the second year in our backyard orchard. And I just wanna share with you that I've got this train in the space that is about five feet wide, maybe five and a half feet. And then I just wanna share with you that the width of the tree is, you can see it's two feet here to this edge. And you can see that it's sticking out right over here where my hand is. That is two feet. So it's less than two feet, maybe closer to 18 inches. And so we've got these pomegranates that are staggered in between three Zager genetic fruit trees. We've got our three flavored pomegranates that we've trained using the Spalier method. While we're basically using the backyard orchard method to basically keep these trees. And we did a lesson on summer pruning over here. And we basically want to make sure that this tree goes into hibernation, which it is just about ready to go dormant. And you can see that all of these branches, when we pruned it back into these positions toward, in the middle of summer, you can see created all of these thinner and more compact branches, which will then be supporting the flowers, which ultimately be supporting a high yield of delicious fruit. This tree over here is one of, again, those Zager genetic hybrid fruit trees known as the Sweet Treat Pluary. One of our family favorite, most delicious fruit tree that we've got here, also another Dave Wilson Nursery um, offered product that we're so excited to have here in the garden. As you can see, we've got these three Dave Wilson Nursery fruit trees, and then staggered in between, we've got the three varieties of pomegranates um, here in the garden, which we, again, we're able to enjoy through the espalier method, and they're still getting plenty of sun as we're training these trees in the backyard orchard culture method of making sure that the trees remain short and compact. And in between that additional space between the trees, we're able to get sufficient light to these pomegranates. As the sun basically travels from east to west, we've actually designed this trellis system also to capitalize on that east to west movement of the sun. So this gets plenty of light during the spring and summer months. So if you come in a little closer, I just wanna share with you that we simply have these four by four posts. And then attached to these four by four posts, we've got these metal cables that are attached. And again, you can see what the system is. Over here, we've got actually one of our berry vines. And you can see here the system that we've used. It basically clips into there and we tighten it through this um, pulley system over here. So I just wanna share with you, this one here was done about a month ago. So if you take a look real quick, you can see that some of these branches have been trained. I've tied them over here. I've got a loose knot, you can see, as there's room for this branch to continue growing. And again, we've trained it over here. We're basically attaching it to grow alongside the cable. So we've done it here. We've done it down here on this cable. And then by doing so, we're able to capitalize on light at this section. And again, on this section. And then ultimately, we're going to have that top bar as well. And we're basically capitalizing on light at every section. And at the end of the day, what's going to happen is we're going to have fruit down here and fruit in the middle and fruit on the top. Another helpful tip when it comes to pomegranates is be mindful of the fact that the new growth that's going to be coming out in spring is going to be supporting the flowers that will be blooming later on in spring compared to, for example, apples that flower on last year's wood. So if we continue here, you can see that, again, this is nice and tight. The total width of the plant, if we pull out the measuring, you can see is about, here's two feet right there. If we lock it up, you can see the whole plant's width is about less than two feet. Here's right there, the two feet. And again, all of these branches that are back here could be brought in. And we've got a structure that's really closer to about 18 inches wide and about six feet wide. And then in the height we've got right now at about seven to eight feet tall. So you can see some branches that are going up towards the top. Some of these, which right now, we can actually take off the height like so. 
With these branches that are coming out in the walkway, similarly, we're gonna be pulling them in tight. The goal is to keep the tree about 18 inches wide. Think about these lower branches too. When they go to flowering and fruiting, you don't want fruit hanging too low to the ground but we do want branches near the ground as we do enjoy fruit that could be as low as just a few inches from the ground, but again, hopefully not touching. So we're just gonna prune these back like so. And by shortening these branches, what's gonna happen is these branches are gonna harden, they're gonna get thicker, and eventually they're gonna better support fruit in this lower area, which is the goal again. We want fruit down here, we want fruit in the middle, and we want fruit on the top. Again, because I've already trained most of these branches to be where I want them, if you take a look over here again, here's some string from many months back. And again, we're training this branch against the cable and we're able to create this compact height structure again um, by training it. And so all I'm doing right now, here we are about six months since we've last trained it. And I'm really just tightening the structure like so. And you can see we've got more branches now than we ever had before. Again, an ideal structure for supporting maximum fruit yields. So here's a couple of branches that are coming loose. Again, it's fall, the leaves are coming down. We're gonna go up here and we can start training these branches. So now we have the option to train this one, you know, as it's already naturally leaning towards this side, we can train it to go all the way to its side. This one over here will be somewhere near the middle. And again, we're just tightening the structure, making it that much more narrow. But again, this is all excellent, great, what's soon gonna be fruiting wood and here we go. You can see that I'm not putting the knot against the tree, which is another very important consideration. We're placing the knot against the cable, if anything. If you need to tie a knot, I would just tie it up onto the cable, but not against the tree, so it'll allow the tree an opportunity to continue to expand and grow without any constriction to the vascular tissue, which is the xylem and phloem that is in the cambium tissues underlying the bark. So I'm gonna continue spalier training. My pomegranate variety is behind me. There's still another one and a half trees to go. In the meantime, I want you to enjoy this lesson from a blast from the past where we started the espalier garden. And again, there's a, another lesson on pomegranate care with my top 10 helpful tips. And again, I'm just gonna be highlighting some of my favorite parts. Before I let you go, I wanna share with you a few other products available by Ivory Organics. And one is the Ivory Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard, as well as whitewash formulas. These are organic ways of protecting your plants from the effects of damaging winter sun scald damage as well as summer sunburn. And by whitewashing your tree trunks, you're basically helping your plant invest its resources towards growth, ultimately flowering and maximum fruit yields compared to a tree that is unprotected, that is at risk and actually putting resources and investing towards first, second and third degree sunburn damage. So um, Ivory Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard and whitewash products is additionally for feeding your plants. And by feeding your plants in late January, early February, for those living in a warmer climate, such as the South United States, including here I am in Los Angeles, you're basically feeding the soil biology and waking it up and offering them the resources. Again, only offered using organic fertilizers. And Ivory Organics is proud to be offering your plants all six plant macronutrients compared to some other plant fertilizers that are only focused on NPK, which is nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. Ivory Organic also includes the magnesium, sulfur, and calcium as well. All six plant macronutrients that plants need in abundance in the soil in order for optimal growth, health, and longevity in your garden. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson on espalier fruit tree care. And if so, be sure to give us that thumbs up. For those of you that are new, be sure to subscribe and hit the push bell notification and share us with your gardening friends and family. And as always, keep growing with Ivory Organics and wishing you all happy gardening.